Hello, I'm Charles Hines, and as chairman of the Sarasota County Board of County Commissioners, welcome to the chair. The purpose of this show is to give an opportunity for us to discuss important issues affecting our community. And today we got a really big one. We're going to talk about the Bay. And joining me today is Mayor Liz Albert and uh, Bill Waddell, who's the man managing director of the Bayfront. Welcome. Thanks for thank you. Thank thanks you. for joining me. Um, and I say it, it is a huge project. To me, I see this as a project that's going to potentially totally reshape downtown Sarasota. But beyond that, I, I really see thus far of the plans that this is a project that will become a regional and maybe a statewide destination in that when you come to Sarasota, you got to go there. That's the way I see it. So that's why I wanted to talk about this. I think everyone in our community knows where the Van Wazel is. But uh, Mayor, um, let's talk a little bit. Tell me a little bit about, about the project. What's the idea behind it? Well, I think what you just said is the idea is to make this a place that if you come to Sarasota, that's where you have to go and maybe that's why you come to Sarasota. So um, we had in that space, the Van Wazel, mm -hmm. as you said, that everybody knows, and two thirds of the property covered in um, concrete be because of the parking um, spaces that are needed. And that's just not the best use of waterfront property. So the idea was to make this appeal to more people. Not everybody goes to the Van Wazel or can afford to go to the Van Wazel. So we want to make it where people can go uh, different interests, different demographics, different uh, income, and really enjoy the waterfront and really make the yeah. most of it. Yeah, beautiful place, incredible sunsets, looking out on Sarasota Bay, and you're absolutely right, it's a parking lot. Yes. So, Bill, uh, you know, your background um, with, I'm gonna say, not construction or development. Sure. Sure. T tell us how you were brought into this and what's the idea of the design behind the project? Sure, well, as you said, my background, I've always had a passion for designing and building things. I spent 31 years at a local engineering firm, uh, did a lot of parks, probably two or three dozen parks all over the state and, and the country. And so I've always had a strong passion for civic projects, and this is an incredible civic opportunity. Um, I'll tell you what, there are not many 53-acre publicly owned parcels on the waterfront left in the state or really in the country. In the country. And so I got really excited to leave the corporate consulting world after a little over 30 years and work on an incredible civic project to, to really leave a legacy for our community. And that's yeah. the incredible opportunity we have. Yeah, so let's, let's confirm something that you said. It's, it's 53 acres and, it, and Mayor, is it all, all the land is owned by the city? Yes. Okay, so we have a lot of mixed use going on there between the Performing Arts Center um, different arts groups, uh, how's that working in, in bringing this plan together when we have some existing users there now? Well, what we're, what we're planning to do, almost all of the structures that are there now because um, most of them are historic, are being left there. You have the, uh, the Women's uh, Garden Club, or right. that's the Garden Club, it's not right. the Women's Garden Club. Um, you have the municipal building. Um, we have um, what's Art Center the, Sarasota. Yeah, the Art Center Sarasota. Blue Pagoda, um, where we are, where uh, our organization is. Okay. Yeah. So we have several, and all of those things will stay. They are incorporated into the design of the property. Okay. The only um, building that is going is um, the G Wiz building. I think the former Selby Library. It's been sitting vacant for a number of years now. Okay. So that's the only structure really that's being um, demolished. And I know you all have done a, a a good job of taking public input to get to the point where we are now. So the boat ramp does it does it it moves a little bit, or but there will be folks to be able to launch their boats there, and obviously yes. this is the bayfront and what we were talking about a little bit earlier before we came on camera was um, I think this will be a place where boaters from Tampa, St. Pete, Fort Myers, Naples are going to want to come to. What's the plan to, to bring them in, to, 
bring them to our community so they can go to a show. Um, maybe if they stay on their boat, okay. If not, they, they stay in a hotel and enjoy the other amenities downtown. How does that work into this? Well, we, uh, um, the, the, the boating, uh, boater uh, access, access from the water to the water is a critical part of our project. We heard over and over again how important that is. We uh, met with over 100 boaters and uh, facilitated a workshop and out of that, we developed a tw about a 25 boater working group that's been helping us with the design plans. What we heard is, uh, first of all, access to the water and to get out into the water is limited, particularly in this part of town, and so that access point is really critical. So we worked with them to relocate that boat ramp just a bit to the north, still staying on this property, um, to expand it and to expand the parking. And so we've actually um, got a, uh, an application into FPNL, which is the property to the north, to expand on an easement and make the parking wider. We're going to improve the restrooms. Uh, again, we're going to provide additional parking. And then the existing that can, uh, uh, canal area that is there is going to be a canal district for uh, day users to come in and, and pull up. Um, stay for a show or, a, uh, you know, go to the restaurants or uh, use, uh, use the park, if you will. Um, and so we want to make this really a, a world-class boater destination beyond just the ramp that it is today. Okay. And then obviously I know the cities and, and even the county dealing with transportation, the difficulty getting on and off, especially Lido and Longboat Key, and the idea of potentially water taxi transportation. So Obviously, someone that's a tourist staying on Longboat Key, if that exists, this is a place I think they'd, they'd want to go. So I'm glad that's being incorporated. So I guess bring us up to date. I mean, we've been talking about this for a number of years. I think the initial name was Bayfront 2020, and we've gone through some name changes. But mm -hmm. where does the project exist today? Um, it's called the Bay now, okay. so it's changed. So there is a website, so if people want to go to that way, website, they can mm -hmm. see the plans and everything that's going on, and I think it's thebay.org. The bay Sarasota. Or the bay bay Sarasota. Sarasota. Mm -hmm. um, so they can go to that, to that website to see what, what's happening. But what the plan is, is to get something going right away because this is a 10 to 15 years maybe even longer build out of all of the things that are going to happen on this property because there's going to be an underground parking garage a new performing arts center a lot of extra okay. park space so we're taking just a little part of the southern portion of the property and developing that within the next couple of years as a park space destination, you know, a little food service there, so a dock coming out there so that people can go and see something happening on the property. So sarasotabay.org? The, or, the Bay, Bay Sarasota. The Bay Sarasota. Dot org. Dot org. That's right. So the plan that if people go on the website, the plan that's on there, that's the approved plan? Are we that, at that point that's saying this is what it's going to be? I know there's always tweaks, yeah. but or. That, that is essentially, yeah, that is okay. the approved plan. Yeah, there may be some tweaks to that, but that's the vision. That's the overall okay. vision. And the, uh, for example, the picture of the Performing Arts Center on there, that may not sure. be that the final design. That's just kind of a placeholder. But people can see... Um, the, you know, kind of a um, horseshoe. The big arc, big right arch over the that canal district. It's going right. to go mm -hmm. over the canal district down into the water, and that's going to that's gonna go up so people can mm -hmm. actually walk out over the water and have an elevated view. Okay. And so it's going to be very, very cool. Right. So, again, as the county commissioner and the city-owned property, we have some many nonprofits that, that are using it. Um, I'm sure that there'll be some entities, obviously the, the builders of all this, but you know, where do we go from here? This is a, a huge project, as you said. I'm sure it's going to be pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about how we fund this. Where is the money coming from? All right. And I'm going to oh. let Bill sure. expand on this, but no. um, what the group that you know is behind helping the city get this going is going to be doing or has done is forming a conservancy to um, sort of manage the park, raise the mm -hmm. money for the park. So even though the city 
still has the final say in what happens. The Conservancy will be the one running the day-to-day -day operation. And is that right. pretty no, fair that's a Absolutely. And in, in fact, we're mm -hmm. working on our Conservancy agreement for the organization. We're calling it the Bay Park Conservancy. Um, conservancies are how many parks like this are operated around the country. There are over two dozen. Central Park's the oldest, but there are lots of them uh, all over the country. And so our organization uh, will have uh, a term of probably 30 or 40 years where we will uh, fundraise, uh, implement, and operate um, on behalf of the city. So it will stay city on land. Mm -hmm. We will bring every phase, this project will be done in multiple phases, we'll bring every phase through the site plan approval process. So neighborhood workshop, planning board, city commission, so that there'll be continuous opportunities for input. Um, but one of the most important things you asked about how we fund it, this, will, this is a several hundred million dollar initiative. Mm -hmm. Many cities have done this around the country. The way you do it is through a mix of funding sources. We'll probably have two, different fun, two dozen different funding sources or more, um, and a mix of public and private. We think probably 40%, maybe 50% of this will be private uh, fundraise dollars through foundations and philanthropy. The master plan that you mentioned was uh, was $2.1 million all privately fundraised just to do the master plan, which was approved mm -hmm. in September. And again, as we move forward, we'll do it in phases, and we expect a mix of public and private funds, grants, uh, local dollars, uh, federal dollars, and, and, and so okay. on. Well, I mean, obviously you need to me, I think, to make it work, and, uh, and I think we'll go into this, but is you know reoccurring revenue. Yes. And so I think we've talked about uh, tax increment financing, uh, yes. I guess a TIF that it's yes. called. And so I you know take take a resident maybe in Inglewood or Northport that says, wait a minute, uh, County Commission, I don't want you to raise my my property taxes to build something in downtown Sarasota. How do, how do you address that type of concern? and explain maybe how the TIF works if that's the process that we go through. Sure. Um, so today, the site, the 53 acre site is largely a parking lot. As you mm -hmm. said, it's 60% it's parking and roofs. In the future, this will be Central Park. And so there are a lot of properties around at several high rise condos, a number and a number on the way that look down at a parking lot that will be looking at Central Park in the future. That creates tremendous value. What's some of the most valuable real estate in, in Manhattan? That on Central Park. And so the idea is that you draw a boundary around the general uh, immediate area of, of our project. And as those revenues increase, the property, the property values increase, there's increased property tax revenue, and that gets recycled for some period of time to help build uh, the, the project itself. And so really, it's only the district, the boundary that you draw around it, where the revenue will get collected and actually for some period of time uh, implemented. But it is not a new tax. It simply takes a, the, that portion of the revenue that it, it is increased and recycles it back into the park for some period of time. And I think that's really important because on, our, on the county commission, we're always under pressure, um, you know, fix some roads, different types of infrastructure, and to be able to explain that if you live in an area that you may not look right upon that park, I would hope you'd come and use it and enjoy it, but if you don't, it's not gonna hurt you. It's only right. gonna help us. Absolutely. Okay, so where are we we, you got the website, you got the plan a little bit going in regards to how it's going to be managed. We talked about financing it, but what's the next main step? How do we get there to maybe draw that boundary line to be able to give the conservancy, yes, we do have revenue sources. Where, how does that going to happen? Uh, go ahead. Um, you want to? Yeah, no, go ahead. I, just, I think once the conservancy is formed, yes. number one, because there's not an entity right now to raise the money, so that's the that's the next right. big step. Okay. Um, and then once that happens, then the people who are forming the board of the conservancy will start reaching out to the various sources that they've identified where we can get money for this. Okay. Absolutely. And uh, again, projects like this are built typically in phases over a number of years. We think this one's 10 to 15 years or more, um, and a mix of public and private sources. The Bradenton Riverwalk, which I worked on, uh, was seven or eight different funding sources, included a TIF district um, and some, some private revenue. And so we think early on in our first phase, which we think is about a $20 million project, which is the 
size of many projects, the Siesta Beach Park improvements were 22 million, a size that our community has done before. We think much of that, over half of it, will have to be done with private philanthropy. Because in the early stages of our startup, uh, it, it takes a while for the bigger sources of money and things like state appropriations, those take a while to, to happen. And so we think philanthropy will lead the way early. But one of the great things about getting uh, things like uh, a TIF district in place is then the private donors see there's a commitment from local government to fund this over the long term. And that makes that um, attracts the private donations um, that you need both that and the public to, to make it sustainable for the long term. One of the things about this project, which is why I think it's, you know, it's happening and it's really going to happen because People have tried to do this, commissions have tried to do this in years past, and it never really got going. It never really got off the shelf of planning stage. But we've got a tremendous number of people who are talented and qualified and know what they're doing, many of them who are volunteering their time to make this happen. So um, that's been the difference in this, in this project this time. That's awesome. Bill, I like you analogizing this project to other ones because people can see it. Sure. And one thing that I felt that the city and downtown has struggled with over time is with the separation of the waterfront from downtown. Um, and we always talk about walkability. Mm -hmm. And so when 41 separated downtown to where Marina Jack is now, and I know the Ritz Carlton's here, it's tough to get across those streets. And a lot of your plans have, you know, walkovers, flyovers. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about that to, to how do you, see, I, I personally experienced, you, you talk about Baltimore, downtown Baltimore, when, when they redid it with Camden Yards and, and their um, area that, that makes that very walkable. Same thing with San Francisco. Uh, the, there used to be an interstate between downtown San Francisco and, you know, their waterfront. Um, unfortunately, there was a major earthquake that mm -hmm. destroyed that, but they didn't rebuild it right. because it brought them together. Much bigger cities than ours, but how do, we, how do we bring the Bayfront and downtown together? Well, I think we are working on doing things 241 to make that more of a boulevard feel so that people can get across. You know, we're, we're looking at doing something to Fruitville as well so that people from the Rosemary District can get downtown. We want people to be able to get over 41. We want to take uh, the view and the new Quay project and the Bayfront project, and that's going to be all connected. So, um, you know, we're working on doing a series of roundabouts that will calm the traffic, make it easier for pedestrians to cross because it's so much easier right. to cross there. There'll there'll be lights that will stop the traffic so that people can cross easily and you're not crossing four to six lanes of traffic. You're crossing right. a couple of lanes at a time. And I think that's gonna go a long way towards making all of that connectivity. And I think that'll that'll make it successful. So if I'm mm -hmm. staying in a hotel downtown, mm -hmm. um, the vision I to, and, and help me understand this, mm -hmm. is either you, and you're going to go see a show, you're either going to walk to that mm -hmm. or there's going to be some type of public transportation, even if it's an Uber or um, what's we, the new one? We've got, got the gotcha. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. That you wouldn't take your car and drive over to right. this. You would get in that type of flow of walking. Is that correct? That's correct. Absolutely. That, okay. that is yeah. definitely the plan is to Good. try to make all of these things more connected, you know, and in future, you know, I'm hoping that we can get a, a gotcha type service out on, you know, St. Armand's Lido Key right. and, you know, some kind of trolley or something that then goes between those two. So, so yeah, ultimately we want to have all of these things in place so that it's really easy for people to get around whether they live here or they're coming here to visit. That's awesome. So let, let me uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, was, I just wanted to add something quick about the overpasses that you mentioned. Um, the, we test, we heard in the top three or four issues always in the community connectivity to our site and across 41 to be a huge issue. We tested uh, underpasses, overpasses at grade, and what resonated the most with our community was putting in these overpasses. And so our plan is to put the first one at Boulevard of the Arts 
wide enough for bikes, pedestrians, and even the gotcha rubber tire mm -hmm. vehicle to go across. Nice. Okay. There is some debate about whether you about should do overpasses or not. Yes, yes. I am a I'm firm believer in the core of downtowns on Main Street, you shouldn't do an overpass. Mm -hmm. You want people at grade. But across state and federal highways, mm -hmm. I personally believe, I've been working on this a long time, it's very important to do that. In addition, what we're talking about is not your normal highway overpass. We're talking about something like the High Line or the overpasses at Millennia Park mm -hmm. that are beautiful, you get amazing views, and they connect everyone across the Rosemary District and right down into the yeah. park seamlessly. Yeah, a little architectural design exactly. to really make it part Absolutely. of the community. Right, and Absolutely. take you like further into right. the park. It just doesn't just cross the road. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So let me kind of wrap a couple things up here. This has been a great conversation. It, uh, hopefully, I, mean, I know it helps me to try to understand what the county's potential role is in this. But um, you talked about the website. If there's someone that's hearing for this about this for the first time and has an interest in it, what do you re recommend? How does someone get involved? How does someone donate? Or maybe if they have some expertise, what, how, do, how does someone get involved? I'm assuming that's all on the website. That's, it is on the, the website. Base Again, the, the, base or, or, the base Sarasota dot org. Uh, I also wanted to mention that we are operating in the sunshine, so every uh, meeting of our board uh, and our executive committees are all publicly noticed. All have minutes. They're all posted. You can go all the way back a year and a half and see the progression of plans that led us to this approval. Um, but you can also sign up for our uh, newsletter online, and you'll also be able to find our email, and certainly uh, you can email me, and, and uh, we'll set up a time and, and talk from there as well. Well, wonderful project. Um, the property's incredible. Uh, great, unique opportunity. I think so. It's a big project. It's expensive, and I hope we can keep the momentum going forward on it, because it's gonna take city county, public, private, a lot of people to make this happen. Absolutely. And having this big of a vision and continuing to inform our public about it is very, very important. So I appreciate you both yeah, coming in today and talking about it. Absolutely. So we appreciate, appreciate you having you. us. Thank absolutely. you. Well, great. Well, thanks for joining us today on The Chair and look forward to our next show. And thank you again. Mm -hmm.